Now, I don't take that to mean absolutely no words are allowed to be spoken between a husband and a wife for all the reasons I've just given. But it is a caution, isn't it? There is a kind of speech that could come out of a wife's mouth that would be totally counterproductive. And a wife must be as wise as a serpent and as innocent as a dove in discerning when and how I can talk to this man in a redemptive way that will not put him so on the defensive that he won't grow. So I'm arguing that it is right and good and necessary that the person closest to you men should confront you with your sin. She should. She should do it in a way that is submissive. I'll give you just an example of what I mean by that. If, if, you, if you come to a husband and he's characteristically doing something that you perceive to be immoral or just so out of step with what Christian character would call for or leadership would call for, you could precede the exhortation with, I love it when you are my leader. In other words, find words that give expression to the affirmation of the husband's role as a spiritual leader. And then, having laid that ground of, I affirm you in that, I want you to be that in this relationship, then you say the problem and ask him to deal with it with you and talk it through. Then he hasn't felt like you've come at him on the attack as though there were no appropriate relationships here of headship and submission. Now back to the text, and we're almost done. This was very encouraging to me to see what I'm going to close with. Verse 25, back to husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her. If you take 1 Peter 3, 1, where it says, Wives, win him over by your pure and respectful conduct. And you say to husbands, Husbands, seek her moral and spiritual growth by dying for her. You see the commonality there? Both of those are saying behavior, loving, sacrificial service is the key to both. Not talk. Talk is right. Talk is good. Talk is necessary. But both of these emphasize husbands, Christ died to make the church holy. Wives, win your husband by your, by your pure and respectful behavior if you can, without a word. Both of those are saying love expressed through sacrificial, humble, respectful, kind, loving behavior is the key to transformation in the other person, which implies this. Everything I've been saying for the past two weeks, you thought... All of that talk about forbearance, all that talk about forgiveness really was just going to leave marriages in their stuck position with nobody changing because all you're emphasizing is forgiveness and forbearance when in fact we've just seen that that kind of behavior is the key means of bringing about the change that you're enduring, bringing about the change of the behavior that you're enduring. Which means the last two weeks have really been about change, even though they've sounded like they're about enduring non-change. Because one of the most powerful instruments in being changed is for a husband and a wife to lay down their lives for each other. To be loved is a very powerful incentive to become lovable. To be loved in a sacrificial, patient, humble way is a very powerful incentive 
to become lovable. That's the way we're related to by Jesus, is it not? He comes to these ugly, dirty, sinful people like us, and he says, I'll die for you. He dies for us and he rises, and by faith alone, he embraces us, still dirty, into his family. And now, that being loved gives us the incentive to become more lovable, more like him. And that's our goal. We don't want marriages that are merely endurance. We want to so endure, so forgive, so forbear, so seek in appropriate ways to confront and deal with each other's flaws that there is over time a growing up into Christ for both of us so that at 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 years of marriage, there's greater conformity to Jesus so that the dance of headship and submission flows with more smoothness and beauty than it ever has, permeated by a lot of delight. Let's pray. So, Father in heaven, pray for Noel and me as we live these things out and try to grow together in them, lest we be sheer hypocrites in saying things like this. And I pray for those who are married in the services that they would perceive this and grow in this and that both husbands and wives would see the appropriate ways by which they can come to the other with longings for appropriate change. God, work a miracle, I pray, in our marriages so that we don't feel threatened, we don't feel ultimatums when the other approaches us. We don't feel hopeless. You want me to do something I cannot do. Help us not to fall into that mindset. Grant, I pray, that grace would abound both in patience and in the pursuit of godly change. I ask this, Lord, for Christ's namesake, for his glory in this world, for the joy of marriages, for the good of children. Indeed, for the reaching of the nations through Christ. Amen.